you know, with UCFB and, and with the path that, that you all are on, I think it's really cool. And, you know, I, I wish I could go back to this time in my life and actually experience this a little bit. The, the, some of the guest speakers you get to hear from, some of the courses you're taking, being immersed in football, all the different personalities that come in and speak to the group. It's just uh, invaluable information. What a treat today, because we're joined by former U.S. international defender and captain. He won over 100 caps. He played at two World Cups. Four years of his career were spent at Fulham, who he also captained, and where he picked up the nickname of the Jackal. Yep, that'll be my first question. I've not heard that before. His playing journey also took him to France. It took him to Spain. It took him to Scotland. He's been with Atlanta United since 2015, where he is vice president and technical director. And that means he's got responsibility for the first team, the academy, uh, structure, systems, players. We couldn't be happier to be in the company of Carlos Bocanegra. Can I hear you? I can see you. Is your microphone working? Can you hear me? I can. I just right. thought I'd spook you out, mate, just for a few fleeting seconds after you've had a little chill once we'd got you sorted. And uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I'm going to start on a really funny area to start, but uh, I wondered what the learning lessons were, because your last time sort of on UK soil, other than in your ambassadorial role with the US international team, would have been playing for Glasgow Rangers just at the time when they tumbled into administration. So... In terms of prudency in your current role, what did you learn from an adverse situation, Carlos? Yeah, well, listen, thank you and thanks for the introduction. Um, you know, technology is funny sometimes. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to, to join you guys and, and be a part here. I was looking forward to uh, doing this in person and, you know, having the whiteboards behind me and being able to explain. But, um, you know, to, to answer your, your first question is just, you know, the adversity, you, you've got to fight through it. And, you know, at a time like this with COVID-19 around the world, uh, everybody's facing the same challenge. Everybody's facing uh, the same issues, uh, you know, and there's, there's not a whole lot of answers. So I think these are the challenging times where, um, you know, as leaders, you, you have to, to make sure that, that you're accessible, make sure that, you know, people can hear from you as often as possible. Um, you know, we have also found it very difficult to communicate to our staff and our players because we just don't get a lot of information from the league and, you know, you're, you're kind of waiting on the government. So I think, um, you know, it's nobody really knows how to navigate uh, this time. It seems to change week in, week out. But, um, you know, with, with the Rangers situation, with this situation, uh, just situations in all of life, you've got to take it as it comes. And, you um, this was actually one of the things I really enjoyed about uh, my time in, in England and, and in Scotland was people just get on with it. And I like it. You, you try to control what you can control. You do the best you can, uh, you know, in, in your sector, how you can affect things and influence things. Uh, but then you, you've got to get on with it because it's not always going to go your way. So that was something that I, I really took from, uh, you know, spending time over there in the UK, uh, the mentality. I really appreciated that. I really like that. Um, and yeah, so that's a little bit of something we're going through now. Um, you know, let me, can, can I just give a little bit of a, a, my, my background as well? Where I, I, I would love you to. I mean, we can, we, we can take this wherever you want to go. I'll, I've got plenty of questions. I'm sure our students, I remind you, please use the chat room, send your yeah. questions for Carlos, but please, yeah, you take it off and uh, yeah, I'll help yeah. fill the gaps. All right, no, I appreciate it. You stole all my thunder with the introduction at the beginning, you know, so. Oh, uh, uh, well, you know. But what I was going to say was, so I'm Carl Negra. I grew up in uh, Southern California. Um, for me growing up, I played a lot of different sports, American football, soccer, baseball, basketball. Um, that's just kind of how we grew up here. Um, was fortunate enough to get a scholarship at uh, UCLA, University of uh, California, Los Angeles, and uh, to play soccer there. And then I was uh, drafted uh, by Chicago Fire in the MLS. And then I played there for four years and was able to come over and play for Fulham in the Premier League for almost five years. Um, and then after that, I uh, had some time in France, back up to Scotland. Uh, as you spoke about, Rangers ended up going under and uh, had to go on loan to Spain in the Segunda Division 
for Racing Santander for a season, and then I ended up back in California uh, in the MLS for about a season and a half before I, I finished retiring. So, um, you know, that that's a little bit of my story. I just kind of wanted to give give a, a feeling of, of kind of how I came through the system. Um, through that time, I was able to play with the, the United States national team, uh, played against England a few times. I put my, my nod to the, the English game back here with the Rooney and Skulls. Uh, a few of the top top players I got to play against and, and change the jerseys with. Um, but yeah, look, I, I think what I wanted to say is my journey taught me a lot. Uh, I lived away from home since I was uh, 20 years old um, and really never went back to California outside of the year and a half. Um, you know, I got kind of used to it, but it made me or it gave me the ability to grow up. It gave me the ability to kind of see who I am. I spent... <laughs> many afternoons at the Wimbledon uh, theater by myself watching an afternoon movie because I didn't have a lot of friends uh, mm-hmm. when I first moved over there. Um, and also it, it was just something that I had some time to reflect. And so what I'm getting at is, you know, all you guys, you know, whether you're in school, you've just finished school, you know, the ability to live away, to get to know yourself. Uh, you guys are living in a, a fantastic time right now outside of the COVID. Let's uh, put that on pause. But the time of your lives in, in college or just graduating, the world is is yours. You have a chance to explore it as you start to get older, more responsibility, families. Uh, you know, that window gets a lot smaller. So I think, you know, with UCFB and, and with the path that, that you all are on, I think it's really cool. And, you know, I, I wish I could go back to this time in my life and actually experience this a little bit. The, the, some of the guest speakers you get to hear from, some of the courses you're taking, being immersed in football, all the different personalities that come in and speak to the group. It's just uh, invaluable information. And, you know, speaking about being a sponge, uh, I think that's really important. Um, and one, one thing I will say is, so I, uh, college in America, uh, university is, is a four-year program. Um, I only went for three years and I left uh, for the professional game. If I'm being completely honest, I didn't take college that seriously because I was pretty focused on just playing sports. Um, but, you know, looking back, I wish I would have taken some sports management classes. I wish I would have taken some business admin classes just for setting myself up uh, for afterwards. So, um, you know, to give everybody in here that wasn't on the call 20 minutes ahead of time trying to technologically get me up to speed here in, in, on the camera. Um, little, little things, I, I will say little things like in my career, going from a player into this next phase, um, you know, some things take me a little bit longer than maybe other people in the administration world or other people that, you know, have actually gone through the whole schooling system, whether it's a sports management program or, you know, just, just being familiar with technology and up to speed uh, on everything that's going. And uh, it, it seems like that's where the world is going now that, you know, as you come through school, it's, you know, tech is, is right in the forefront, right? So um, that's just something I think don't take for granted any of your classes because you never know um, what you're going to utilize them for later. And, um, you know, maybe take a few classes that get you out of your comfort zone just so you have an idea of what else is out there and, and things are familiar to you.